my gardening dad when he shows up. <laughs> okay, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Staying Healthy at Home Gardening. Today is July 2nd, and I bring that up because we're a little bit small of a group, small but mighty, because I think a lot of people are off today for the holiday weekend. But we're glad you're here for Staying Healthy at Home Gardening. And I'm Jenny Starr, the Health and Wellness Specialist for the Kansas City Public Library. And I'm joined today by Monica Miller, who is my intern at the library, our health and wellness intern, and also works for the University of Missouri Extension. I prefer we, the term protege. Protege. Okay, <laughs> I will use that word next time. Um, and Amy Morris, I think, is going to join us, but she she's working at Rees Library, and she might have just gotten caught up, you know, working with customers. So that'd be okay. Um, but she did send me a picture of dill. So I will share that with you at some point today. And I will turn the time over to Monica. Thank you, Jenny Starr. Hi, everybody. Happy Friday. Happy three day weekend. Um, happy, I guess it stopped raining in Kansas City. So maybe I'll feel like here's Amy. Amy too. So hopefully maybe I will feel awake again soon. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about fall. My dog just heard that. I thought it was a real doorbell. Banjo. It's okay, bud. Aww, banjo. banjo. Mommy's little genius. Um, so we're going to talk, believe it or not, it's time to start talking about fall gardening here a little bit in zone six. Um, especially if you plan on starting any of your fall crops from seeds indoors, like broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage. Um, I'm going to try Brussels sprouts this year. Um, I'm sorry, hang on just a second. Please hold for our technical difficulties. It's really just life at home, right? Pet? Is that what it says when I mute? No, no I just said it. <laughs> Oh, okay. Come here, bub. All right. I've got the, the beast. He's tamed. Um, yeah, so any of those things that take, you know, a little bit longer to grow, um, you're going to want to start usually by like the middle of July is a good time to start those inside so that they will be ready to go outside, um, like middle, late August, early September. Um, the other cool thing, this is just a totally random thing I wanted to share with you. I haven't tested these out yet. But off of Amazon, oh my gosh, this dog, there he is. Um, so <laughs> off of Amazon, I ordered these really cool diamond tip drill bits and they can help drill holes in like ceramic pots and stuff that don't have any drainage, which is, you know, really important. Not only if you have indoor plants, but also for that container gardening we were talking about last week. It's just super important to have the good drainage so that you don't get root rot, which can lead to all kinds of crazy diseases. Um, so I will let you all know how that goes, but you can see, and there's all kinds of openings. I think this one goes up to, I think the biggest one is an inch wide. So I'll let everybody know how that goes. And if they work really well, I'll send out the link for them. But I, they had really good reviews. So if you need a hole in your pot and you live in Kansas City, bring it on over. Put a hole in your pot for you if it works. OK. So let me share my little screen here. not showing my PowerPoint. Hmm. Okay, you're holding for technical difficulties again. Sorry, y'all. That's so weird. Well, ah, I had too many tabs open. That's why I had to scroll over for it somewhere. Okay, can everybody, everyone see the PowerPoint that I've got pulled up? Groovy, okay. So, zone six, fall gardening. Um, LA friends, I would have to look um, when you probably would do this 
quite a bit later than we do this in Kansas City. So this might be, you know, maybe a month or so ahead of schedule for you all. But still, you know, same concept applies, just a slightly different time frame. No worries. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's all it's all good. Okay. So we've talked about three season gardening a little bit before. But um, here in Kansas City, that's something that we can do really successfully. And I consider three season gardening spring, summer, fall. So technically we have three different major planting seasons that we can do here in our climate in zone six. The average frost, first frost risk date in Kansas City area um, runs between, or it's just, so the first frost, oh my gosh, that's a tongue twister. The first frost is generally expected around October 15th here in Kansas City um, anymore with, you know, kind of general temperatures rising. Sometimes, you know, we get an extra week or two on either end. Um, and then April 15th is generally going to be our last, our last frost risk date. Um, this year, though, we kind of got a crazy, um, I think it was early May that we had a night where it dipped really briefly below 32 degrees. So that sent a lot of people panicking who had put their tomatoes in a little bit too early. But that gives us a really solid warm weather growing season of about 185 days. Um, there's also a lot of ways where you can extend that growing season on either end by a few weeks and we'll talk about those as well. Um, on top of that, you know, a lot of vegetable plants can tolerate some frost or even a few, you know, light freezes. And I consider a light freeze to be when it's kind of like just at 32, maybe it's, you know, 30, 31. And a lot of times, you know, it only dips that low for an hour or two. Um, so any of those cold season vegetables for the most part, um, you know, greens, your broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage, Brussels sprouts, stuff like that, they, they can handle a little bit of um, a freeze or frost certainly. Um, some simple tricks, just like covering crops with a cloth at night, making an inexpensive, you know, do it yourself hoop house that can really extend the growing season even further, which is pretty sweet. So some cool weather crops. Again, I've kind of got these broken down into like pretty surefire bets of stuff that we'll do well here in the fall in zone six. And then some kind of, you know, if you're feeling risky and crazy some stuff that you can try. So this is actually lettuce that we grew last year in the fall and I had just done like rows of different kinds of lettuce to give myself a little rainbow lettuce bed. I thought that turned out really neat. Um, but cabbage, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, um, cilantro, parsley, dill, those all do pretty well in cooler weather. Um, cauliflower, broccoli, leafy greens. So it's going to be lettuces, you know, um, kale, mustard greens, collard greens, all of that stuff. And then most root veggies are going to do great in this cooler weather. I've got a link again, just for us Kansas City folks. It's got that planting season for Kansas City community gardens. So if you go up to um, their website, then you'll be able to pull up the same planting calendar and it's gonna have a list of the cool versus warm season vegetables. And it is gonna tell you when they have those available for, for sale. Some stuff that you can maybe give them a try, um, wax, pole, bush beans. Um, I did have success planting another round of those in kind of like late August last year. Potatoes, that's something I would like to try. Um, peas, like sweet peas, the climbing vining peas, and onions. Those are all things that you could give a try, but they're maybe not as guaranteed for success as the stuff that I mentioned on the last slide. And this is the hardcore group. Um, <laughs> this is um, a picture of my, one of my community gardens last year after we had gotten about six inches of snow in February. And this, this spinach had been planted in late September. And it did the same thing again this year. It went all the way through. Um, so did the turnips that we planted. I harvested those turnips in like February probably. Um, spinach, um, kale. I have a kale plant in my front yard that's been in for like 18 months and it's still producing pretty decent kale. 
rosemary, sage, rosemary and sage are basic, they're practically perennial, at least here in zone six. Um, our neighbors have got a sage plant. We've lived in this apartment for almost seven years and they've had the same sage plant in their front yard the whole time that we've lived here. Um, radishes, they can go for a really long time. Um, I would imagine carrots too. I don't personally grow carrots, but I, I have to imagine they will probably grow when it's pretty cool out because they do, you know, they get insulated when they're growing underground as opposed to above ground where they're really exposed to the elements. So it can give them a little extra, you know, couple degrees of protection that makes all the difference. So when to plant, um, most fall crops do best when they're planted in early to mid August, which is like the time that we are the least interested in being outside. Um, mine usually end up getting planted more like late August personally, but um, you know, those broccoli, cabbage, cauliflower do best as transplants because the seeds to germinate and stuff, they don't want to be too hot and they're going to take too long if you don't start them inside and then transplant them. Seeds will germinate quickly due to warm temperatures, so you want to water them frequently and cover them with a light layer of mulch, especially if you're direct sowing like more lettuce. Um, more greens, radishes outside because they're going to be like, Wah! if they pop up and it's super hot out and they're not um, getting enough moisture, enough protection from the really, really hot elements. Garlic is another one. You actually sow garlic super late in the year in this zone, usually around mid-November. And then that is an early to mid-summer crop. Most of my friends I know that are growing garlic are harvesting it right now. So it is really important that they have that kind of cold weather, like dormant period over the winter or else they're not going to, um, they're not going to grow the way that they're supposed to in the summertime. You can harvest the scapes, which are the green shoots that pop up from the top of the garlic in late spring. And a lot of people just add the, like to um, add them like to stir fries. You can put them in a blender, make like a pesto out of it, um, blend it into soups. It's really, really good. If you can get your hand on some scapes, you're gonna be eating good later because they're almost like a grassy, mild garlic flavor. They're super tasty. And back to extending the growing season, some crops can be grown practically year round with just a little bit of protection from harsh winter conditions. And there's, this is another thing, if you go on Google and you Google like DIY hoop house, um, cold frame, and I'm gonna talk about what exactly those are here in a minute. There's a thousand and one different ways to DIY them. And it goes from like crazy fancy to looks kind of crappy, but it's still gonna get the job done and be really inexpensive. So there's something for every taste and every budget out there. So row cover, this is kind of the most simple thing that you can do, um, especially if you're worried about frost on top of some of your vegetables. It's crazy and expensive. I buy mine at Kansas City Community Gardens and it is eight, it's a eight foot wide, strip of kind of, it's almost like if you had the like cloth and plastic hybrid almost. I don't really know how to explain what like the texture is like, but it's more kind of like gauzy fabric-like, I guess. Um, so you get, it's eight feet wide and then for every foot long you get, it's, I think it's like 25 cents. It might be 50 cents, but it's incredibly inexpensive. It's made from a semi-sheer material that really allows an air, light, water, but it can give just that little extra couple degrees, you know, if it gets down to 32, um, those lower 30s, um, to protect those frost sensitive crops and extend that season a little bit longer with extra warmth. And this is a great thing to have too, like when we do have a freak 32 degree night in, you know, early mid-May. Um, this is a, a great thing that you can do to protect those crops. It can also help with pest control, but you do need to keep in mind you would be keeping like the beneficial, a lot of the beneficial insects out as well. Um, but, you know, sometimes you just can't handle another stinking um, Japanese beetle and you got to do what you got to do. 
hoop houses. These are great. Um, they're more sturdy, permanent um, version of row covers. They provide really great protection from extreme weather conditions and pests. And they're pretty easy to DIY. You can just use plastic sheeting. You can use that row cover sheeting. And most people just drive a little bit of like rebar into their beds and then they stretch a PVC pipe, kind of like an arch or a rainbow over. And then you can put the, the fabric or the plastic material on top. And that can extend your growing season up to one month on both ends, especially if you're using like kind of a clear plastic sheeting, because it's basically going to function as a greenhouse. And, um, you know, when it's in like the 30s, um, 40s, it's going to give you some great extra warmth and help you either start early or grow later into the fall. So I'm hoping to get off my tuchus and do this this year. Cold frames, that's another one. I think this is like the smartest idea right here. So they, it's a transparent roofed um, enclosure. It's usually closer to the ground. And it is, you're kind of taking the same idea as a greenhouse because it traps heat really efficiently. And you do actually, you don't want to have your stuff closed up in these if it's much more than about 50 degrees out or you are going to like toast everything that's inside of there. Um, really great for germinating seeds outdoors early in the season. I've seen some videos on YouTube of people starting radishes in like February and zone, zone six underneath these cold frames. Because some of the, the tricks to getting stuff um, that's directly sown going, like the, the plant itself, like the mature plant would do fine in these cooler conditions. But what you're missing is that warmth that you need just to get the seeds to germinate and start. So if you can artificially create that warmth to get the seeds to germinate, then you would be able to take this off and your cold season crops will be fine on their own. It's just, it's a great way to get stuff started. And then again, if you want to prolong that season, um, provide some extra warmth. And this is from last time we did this. I don't have a special guest lined up next week, but now that I've shown you this, I'm gonna try to find you one because um, I'm here for the fans. And that's all I have. Did we have <laughs> um, Amy, did you have a dill update for us? Let me stop sharing my screen. Oh, I did that already. You did. Amy, I can share the picture of dill that you sent me. Okay. Let me do that. I guess any questions about that while um, Jenny's looking for the dill? Yeah, I sent um, Jenny a picture of the dill I started at the same time um, at home as I did here because we had an episode while I was gone on vacation and a rabbit ate my dill here. Rude. But that's, that's okay nice because dilla. you can keep putting dill out, you know, throughout the summer so I can put more out. Um, but uh, there's a picture on the screen of what the dill looks like at home now that was started at the same time as my dill here. And it's between five and six inches now. Awesome. So nice. And I would say I would, it looks like a carrot a little bit when it first gets started. Well, are they the same family or something? I think I read you're not supposed to plant them together or something. They're kind of <clears throat> I think that we did True. talk about that. But mm -hmm. doesn't it look like a carrot? It does look yeah. like a carrot. It's got the feathery leaves like a carrot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so yes, they are related. Well, I sent Amy an email when she sent this and said, I don't blame that bunny because I like dill too. And I'm sure it tasted delicious. So that's maybe that's the gardening lesson for this week is that when you garden, you do have a lot of this stuff happen and you just kind of have to plan on it happening and not get upset about it and have a backup plan. And my black backup plan was to plant some dill elsewhere also. Okay. So that way I've kind of doubled my chance for success even if I have something bad happen. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm not upset about it since I have other yeah. dill, but that, you know, I'm in the always garden. disappointing, but yeah. that's, that's my motto that is I, I figure I'm gonna mess up most things at least once before I figure out how to do it the right way. But I, yes, the idea of not putting all your eggs in one basket is always wise, I think. Oh, Amy, thank you for If it's important in. to you, yeah, have a backup plan. Yeah, yes. and we have a lot of critters here, so lots of competition for our food. 
<laughs> I have a question yes, about did. that. Sorry, about that hay framework, you know, with the window. Mm -hmm. Would the hay last more than a year or how long would that last? Um, it would kind of depend um, on how much it breaks down, like over the winter and stuff. Um, if you like were to kind of cover it up and keep it from getting wet, it wouldn't break down as quickly. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know, my answer is maybe. Yeah. Um, because when people use like the the hay bales for doing the hay bale raised beds that we watched that video of maybe like last month, um, it will it will break down eventually. But what's cool about that is it leaves behind like really rich organic material, like it makes its own compost basically. And um, it is important to use straw and not hay because straw has been kind of like. I feel like pasteurized is like maybe a little too strong of a word, but it's been it's been treated so that um, there's not going to be any like surprise like clover growing all of a sudden out of it. Whereas with um, with hay, you might run the risk of having a lot of weeds kind of already embedded. And I mean, that's not to say you can't use it, but it just might be a little bit more work. Yeah, thanks. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I think that was a really cool idea, the, the straw bales, because you could also, you know, have those there in the spring to use as, for your cold frames. And then when you're done needing the cold frames, you could treat them with fertilizer so that you can turn them into those straw raised beds. I think that would be a really neat thing to do. When you say you can plant potatoes, do you also mean sweet potatoes and yams? So sweet potatoes, you actually would want to be planting around right now-ish. They do take a fairly long time to grow, so I don't think they would be ready in time if you planted them in, um, you know, much later than probably like early mid-July. But I've also planted some sweet potatoes like closer to the beginning of August, and we were able to harvest them in like late October. So it just kind of depends on like if the stars align for you with weather you know, as you're going into the fall and stuff, but mostly just like um, true potatoes because they need, a, and there's varieties that grow and mature more quickly. Um, but what I was actually, they were talking about this on my way home on NPR today. They're talking about planting potatoes on Science Friday. And the expert that they had on was saying that as soon as you take out your first round of potatoes for the summer, that that's a good time probably to just go ahead and put more seeding potatoes back in. So around now, it's like the next few weeks, it wouldn't be too late to do that. Thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome. And I always say, just try it. Like the worst case scenario is you're out of 50 cent potato. Like you might as well try something and see what happens. Thank you so much. Great, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. That's what I'm here for. It was a great session. I have a question, but it's kind of the opposite problem of okay. you know, dealing with cold. It's dealing with heat. How do you, you know, if you want to grow greens in the summer because you're not motivated to do it until it's the wrong time of year. <laughs> Well, and that would be, you know, a good reason to maybe try and do the fall crop of greens. Um, if you want to tempt fate and try to grow them in the summertime, I would grow them in the shade, probably. Um, somewhere that's going to stay a little cooler. And I would also um, mulch them really well, especially the seedlings. So if you were to plant them and then maybe put some straw or you know some other type of like mulching on top of it. Um, that's it can it's beneficial in all temperature situations because in the early spring it's going to help insulate. It's going to help keep the seedlings warmer. But then on the opposite end in the summertime, it actually helps insulate and keep them cooler, and it's also going to help retain water in the garden. So mulch is just like good for everything. There's nothing that you like should not throw mulch on top of for the most part that I can think of off the top of my head. So if you do wanna try, I would maybe do like a little container, 
put it in a shady spot somewhere and just make sure you get, you know, like an inch or two of that um, straw or some other kind of mulch on top of it. And how soon do you put the mulch on? I mean, do you plant them and then just throw mulch on top before they poke their heads up or you wait until at least? So what I do is I will plant it and then I will kind of like identify where my rows are, at least so I just know. And I can kind of like keep an eye on it through the mulch and just make sure it's not getting like completely smothered out. And then as they get larger, um, then you just kind of pack the mulch up like around the base of the plant. And that's what's going to really help retain that the cooler temperatures and the moisture. Does that make sense? That does. And that's really helpful because I don't think anybody ever says that. And so I'm clueless, you know. So yeah, there's you. some things like the one thing that I always struggle with when pe people are like water it a couple inches. And I'm like, how do I tell how many inches I've watered something? Like Jenny and I are always like trying to, that's like the mystery of life to us. We're yeah. like, what does it mean? <laughs> that would be good that's on so a com true. comedy skit, you know. <laughs> And I have one more question that's kind of yeah. related. Um, sure. Okay, so are some greens more heat tolerant than others? Yeah, there there definitely are. Um, kale will be a little bit um, less fussy about warmer temperatures. Um, it can still bolt, which is where it goes to seed. Um, but I, you know, like I said, I've got that kale that's been in the ground for um, 18, it's been about 18 months. Um, chard, um, my chard stays in the garden year round almost, um, definitely during the summer. And I like to plant that stuff in a part of my garden that before the trees really fill in, like in the early spring, it gets a lot of bright direct sunlight. But then by the time it's this time of year, it's only getting maybe like a couple direct hours of sunlight every day. So it's kind of helping maintain slightly cooler temperatures. But um, those I think are the two that do the best in my personal experience. Um, I know mustard will, will bolt after it gets too hot. Um, so will collard greens. Um, so will most Asian greens like bok choy, stuff like that. So if you, if you wanna try, I would suggest chard, Swiss chard and kale. To get started with. Thank you very much. That's yeah, you're welcome. And those both grow really easily from seed too. You don't have to necessarily find a, a transplant for those. Okay, that's good to know. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, any more questions before we finish up for today? Do you know the topic of next week? No, I never know the topic of next week. Okay. I should <laughs> I never know the topic until Thursday night or Friday morning, <laughs> but I'm open to suggestions. Yes, if there's anything that you want to see, let us know for sure. Well, actually, I missed the one that I was waiting for. Oh. I had to buy a car that day. Which was is, it last week? Yes, the container gardening. So I, did you record that? Yes, I recorded it. And so I, it's not posted yet, but when it gets posted, I'll make sure and let everyone know. Okay. Thank you so much. Cause that's, yeah, cool. please. The only way I can do it. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. I missed last week too. Okay. Yes. I I've been recording. I think I've only missed maybe one. Mm -hmm. So, um, I'm, I'm trying to do a better job of remembering to record. I have actually, this is my system, a post-it because I keep forgetting. <laughs> so I just have it right. Here so I won't forget. I have to imagine that I did not record the week that you were gone. No, I think that's the one we don't have, but that's okay. That's okay. Um, but we ha we'll have quite a few and they'll go up on the library YouTube channel. And Monica and I are also working on our Facebook group. Um, don't, don't look for it right now because we're changing it, but <laughs> completely. We're doing great yeah. guys. <laughs> um, but we are going to have all those videos there as well. Yeah. So um, we wish you a very safe and happy holiday weekend, and we hope that you are back with us next Friday. You too. We definitely will. All Thank right, everybody. You. Take care. Make good choices. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.